All right, welcome back, everybody. As we know, weather patterns can be incredibly complicated to forecast, especially during hurricane season, right? But we can use mathematical equations to track and predict the movement of our atmosphere. Now, weather modeling gives us a way to use those predictions visually. And some models go in detail about the available information. Others use kind of an average to get a long-term prediction. Joining me now is Mike Boylan, the storm chaser and blogger behind Mike's weather page. <laughs> Mike, you got plenty of viewers out there, and they're all talking about spaghetti models, uh, ensembles, things like that. First of all, welcome back, buddy. Things are starting to get a yeah. little more active this week, right? Yeah, you, you called that last week. You said, I bet we have something to talk about. <laughs> we do. <laughs> <laughs> we, we really do. Uh, so let, let's talk about it right now. It's, I was looking at spaghetti models for what could possibly happen right. with Dexter just a little bit before. Now it's kind of a moot point because we all know where Dexter's going to go. But spaghetti models are something that we use with something that's just formed or about to form, and uh, they're, they're freely available to the public. What are your thoughts on the spaghetti models? Well, for me, that's what kind of started my journey back in 2004. Uh, I ran across them for Charlie, and I'm like, what are these things? You know, they're so cool. And, um, yeah, I'm addicted to them. Uh, they're confusing because, you know, you, <laughs> unless you really understand what they're telling you. Um, but I think the majority of weather nerds out there like myself and you and others uh, enjoy them. Um, and uh, you, can, you can learn a lot, trust me. I mean, as you know, they're they're very useful and, and determining uh, trends and consistency and timing. Um, so, yeah, I, I gather a lot of info from those. Yeah, and there are great. So we're looking at a, a batch of them right now, the spaghetti models for Dexter and what all these computer models are going to think. Each one of those lines is an individual computer model's output for where it thinks it's going to end up, right? So when you have a, a bunch of clustering like what we have right now with Dexter, we're pretty much sure it's going to go in that direction. Yep. But when it starts going haywire and they're all over the place, Mike, that's <laughs> when it gets interesting. Yeah, I always refer to them like a bunch of brains. You know, like <laughs> all of us have our own thoughts and opinions. And when they, we, they start to agree, you're like, all right, we got something to believe in. And, um, y you know, every storm, I remember, you know, for outliers, for example, with Irma, and uh, we had a lot of trending on the East Coast of Florida. But that year, the high pressure was strong and it was building back in. And we had these outliers that were on the other coast of Florida where it ultimately went. You know, what I'm seeing is two, three days out, sometimes the outliers went. And uh, especially with Ian, like I'll never forget Ian, you know, the GFS that year was really skewing things. Right. Um, the European ensembles was always pointing to Florida. And uh, eventually they had to take the GFS out of the equation. All of a sudden that cone shifted. So I think you can learn a lot from those. And, you know, we're tracking, obviously, this next system, which I'm watching the current GFS mm -hmm. uh, and it doesn't look good um, for the wave. It's not even being talked about yet. Yeah. Um, so we're we starting to get consistency. Unsure, yeah. Yeah, that's, you know, I'm looking at it now. You know, we, mm -hmm. we look at consistency in that. Um, so, yeah, let, let's talk about that. Stuff. It's interesting because you talk about the GFS. We, we, for, for a long term forecast, like one that's about five to 10 days out, you don't really want a deterministic model. You want the ensembles, right? The deterministic model puts all the information it has right there and pumps out one forecast, right? The, the, the yeah. ensembles, you can mess with it a little bit. You can maybe change the humidity here, a wind here, and you get a different plot of all the uh, models, and you usually take the average of that. Yes, it, totally. And I, and I like seeing uh, trends, you know, um, right. and they pick up on trends usually ahead of their operational run, mm -hmm. and you could spot that. Now, like this, you know, system in the middle of Atlantic, uh, the GFS was going haywire with a U.S. landfall. Now, yeah. overnight, all of a sudden, it, it caught up to the euro. <laughs> so that's where, you know, I wasn't raising that panic button yet because mm -hmm. the euro didn't even have one ensemble showing the West Coast. Right. And the GFS is now saying that's going to probably go middle Atlantic. Um, but, yeah, you're right. The deterministic models, I love them to death, like the h Wharf and H-Mon and the Hoffs. Those are great for intensity. Mm -hmm. uh, so every yep. model is a little different. You know, like usually these the Euro and GFS don't pick up on intensity very well. So I, you know, I use a blend of them. You know, some models are better at picking up things. Some are better, you know, with intensity. And, right. you know, the ones each year that seem like they're not doing very good and this year, unfortunately, it seems like the GFS. You know, you're right, and it's you're so right. You take a blend of all of them, and that's really the best way to do it. You want to see what one model's thinking European GFS. Yesterday, Stephen Morgan and I were joking around, Mike, and we, we were watching the uh, GFS model, and it had like a Category 3 or 4 smashing into the Carolinas and holding its intensity all the way up through D.C., <laughs> Baltimore, Philadelphia, and putting it in the Poconos as a Category 1 hurricane. Yeah. That was yesterday. Today yeah. we wake up, like you said, it's not I, even there. No. Nothing. And, you know, I, I think this year the the 
um, the amount of folks that are on TikTok and, you know, sharing these individual runs. I was that guy. I'll admit it. I was oh, that yeah. guy 20 years ago. Mm-hmm. Um, but um, it raises that panic level, you know, because they had New Orleans a couple of days ago. Then it, it's like it picked everybody. Everybody was getting a hurricane. But most <laughs> people aren't into the weather as much as maybe you and I and others. Right, and, and they right. see that and they, that's what they hold on to. You know, yeah, they're like so true. And, so, um, and, and yeah, you, have, it's you have to tough. think of the, bi- the, the biases too. Even if you're forecasting, like I've, we've got the Fox weather model up here, that's a, a deterministic. You have to know what yeah. the biases are. Like, for instance, in the wintertime, a, a, a model, a forecast model, isn't going to know where the snow is on the ground. So, if you have clear sky, snow on the ground, the model isn't going to pick up that the temperature is going to be right. five to 10 degrees cooler with that cooling going on at night because of the snow on the ground. You, you have to know what, what the models are, strength, what their strengths and weaknesses are. Totally. And there's a there's a gut feeling, common yeah. sense. Right. I mean, mm-hmm. we have we were I think everyone's relying too much on the da- data and they forget a little bit about common sense, you know, and yeah. uh, that's just how you choose the message. And um, you just brought up the temperatures off the, you know, the eastern Gulf there. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm surprised that they haven't highlighted that area, because if you look at the Google A.I. and you, if you look at the euro, it, it, there's quite a few ensembles showing a low lifting up early in the week. Um, and like you said, the waters are hot. Uh, we never really have much model support on, on where they marked 40. And that that really shocking them to me a little bit because really haven't had much anything showing it developing. But they, you know, 40 percent. So, I, you know, they might know, know something we don't. But, I know. Um, uh, we're, we're looking at that. We, we circle. I just circled the northern part of the Gulf and, and the West Coast, to your point. I mean, it's, we know that the, some of the models are drifting that energy. The energy is there right now, just east of the Bahamas. Right. Will it make it its way? It's going to go over your house first, right, you know, at the end of the week? <laughs> and then eventually it might go into uh, the Gulf. Yeah, it's funny. The number one question I get, you know, everybody's so concerned about vac- and, and rightfully so, vacations mm-hmm. and cruises, you know. I got Daytona coming up, and I'm already, like, stressing out i'm asking myself <laughs> mike what about daytona because i'm that guy now asking me you know uh with these long-range models um i even email my contact at daytona i'm like you know we might have a little problem coming here and, yes uh, so, so like, it's, uh, you're right it's crazy it's like welcome to the party my wife she always hammers me when she's out there and she gets caught in the rain no umbrella you didn't tell me it was gonna rain it's like yeah. i was working i didn't have time <laughs> That's the way you I, and softball games. They're, everybody comes up to me like I, and I'm off. See, the problem is the weather. Like I'm optimistic. I don't want it to rain at softball, so yeah. I'll be like, it's not going to rain. Then it's thundering outside. Yeah, like, I call that a like, wish cast. Just, I do the same thing, man. I, I, right. <laughs> <laughs> it's, a, it's a total wish cast for sure. But, yeah, you have you and the followers that ask you questions. Those, those are the ones, I guess, that have come up the most is uh, what's it going to be like at my house, right? Oh, yeah, yeah, I feel bad. I mean, I you know, I don't want to be a jerk, but I, I kind of like I, I'm laying out a broad synopsis of everything. You kind of have to think a little bit for yourself a little bit, you know, like, you, you, you know, especially living in Florida. I mean, and yeah. then people that make plans in August, September, it's hurricane season. Yeah. We're always going to have to watch yeah, you and know. if you don't get that, um, you get a lot of rain with the sea breeze, the gulf breeze colliding, all that stuff. So, yeah, Florida, yeah. man, you, you, you need to know what it's going to be like when you move down to that state. I love it, by the way. It's, <laughs> it's my favorite. I absolutely love it. Yeah. Mike, man, it, it's a I'm pleasure. Ready. It's a pleasure. I think, unfortunately, next week we're going to even have more to talk about uh, if we're looking at these models yes. that are hopping off. And uh, I, I'm, yeah. I'm sure we'll be watching some stuff out there by MDR. We'll see if that gets loosened up a little bit more. Oof. Yeah, I mean, yeah, no, I this 12z gfs is running right now and it's you know agreeing with the euro on that yeah. next future spot so. yeah you saw it was uh, near cuba <laughs> i mean we're talking about 10 days out but yeah, still. yeah i know man i just hate to see it uh agreeing you know 963 just north of uh puerto rico here on the 16th yeah oh uh, you know what we, we actually we have one of your <laughs> we have one of your view questions right here you want you guys want to pop that up what was your most harrowing moment chasing hurricanes, Mike? I, I think I know it, but I want you to answer because I remember you yeah. talking about it before. Yeah, luckily your uh, producer. Yeah, I Bob some Parrish them, from you know, Chapel. But, uh, yeah, How about that? It uh, uh, has to be Ian, all right? So we were we were camped out at Ian. Uh, we decided to start driving in an area called Rotunda West, and mm-hmm. uh, there's video of it there, actually. Uh, and, and the eye wasn't even here yet. So I'm like, oh, let's go drive around a little bit. You know, we got a couple hours, and um, – we got almost stranded. Like I started going down these roads. They were flooding. Every road we went on was flooding. There started to be flying debris. I'm like, 
I didn't think we were going to get out. I had almost, there was a bridge. I'm thinking, we're, we're going to have to stop on this bridge and ride this thing out in the open air, you know? Yeah. Like, um, so I would, that was it because I didn't know where to go. I, I didn't have a map. I, didn't, I was confused, you know. We're trying to get the heck out, and the water's rising. And I'm like, you know, the little panic set in that, there. And when we finally got on the other side of the, all that water, and, whew, man, it was. And then the storm was another several hours, but I felt safe. Yeah, I learned have a safe spot. Like, <laughs> I know. Don't venture off where you don't know where you're going. Just your video, man. You got white caps in the water in front of you. I mean, that, it doesn't get any more yeah. harrowing than that. That's amazing. I'm so. First of all, I thank God that you're okay. Second of all, we learn from this kind yeah. of stuff because I found myself in situations like this before too. Yeah, and there's a lot of locals down there that when I shared this, they they, they were there with me. They were riding it out. There's mm -hmm. roofs flying off, pool Gosh. cages. Um, I started worrying about trees because every road we went down, there was a tree down. So yeah. then I'm thinking, well, the, we had one way in, one way out. You know, mm -hmm. there's an old Almer Brothers song like that, one way out or something. I'm like... Oh. I got one way out, and that road closes. What the heck am I going to do? So yeah. that was panic. Cause, yeah, um, it's so bad. But we it's got scary. Right. You guys got out okay with that one. Uh, you, you worry about down pirate power lines too. The whole thing. Yeah, it's power so trees, dangerous. popping tires. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> fix a flat, baby. That's a uh, man's best friend when you're driving yeah. around that thing for sure. Uh, I know. You my, know what's crazy? I uh, my adrenaline's pegged, and I I'll do it again. I, yeah. I don't know what it is. I know. I know the feeling, but we just we got to be safe. It's all good, though. I appreciate it. Yeah. Hey, Mike, uh, thank you very all much. Right. Hey, next Wednesday, let's talk about it again, buddy. We'll yeah. talk to you in a little bit. Thanks yeah, for thanks joining for me, buddy. Me, all right, man. We'll be right back. See you.